Hello everyone, welcome to Poland with Ela. I'm Ela and I'll be showing you around Poland and explaining all the intricacies of the culture and the mentality of the people here. In today's episode, I will be telling you about and explaining how to behave in social gatherings in Poland. When I came back to Poland from Mexico at the age of 17, I was very shocked to find out that here people, even teenagers, don't go out dancing every weekend, don't party crazy every weekend. They prefer to meet up for a coffee or a drink or meet up in smaller gatherings. I'm more Polish than all of you. Why? Because I'm drinking more than you. Back in Mexico, I remember people were saying, and it was actually true, if you invite about 10 people to your house, you have to be ready for about 100. But in Poland, if you invite 100 people to an occasion, to a party, and I've checked it on several occasions, about 10 to 20 people show up. And living here for a while, I do understand why that happens. A lot has to do with the climate. Obviously, it's much nicer to gather up at someone's warm home when it's dark, cold and rainy outside, rather than go out around the city. So people here tend to meet up in much smaller groups than in other cultures and if you get an invitation it's probably gonna be for a smaller gathering, to go out to the movies for a drink, to the theater or hiking in a smaller group. What is it that you have to do straight away? If you're invited to a social gathering in Poland, well there is probably someone organizing it and they would like to know how many people are going to be there, just for example to know how much food to prepare, or in a restaurant how many seats to reserve, what, how big the table they should reserve. Even if the party or the outing doesn't require much preparation, it's always nicer to let the person who's invited you know if you're going to show up and if something comes up, let them know if you will not be able to make it. Polish people, like actually a lot of people in this part of the world, tend to be very punctual. It's a little bit different with time as it is, for example, in the United States, where they say that time is money. In Poland, time is respect. If you're invited for an outing somewhere, you know, hiking, to a theater, to a restaurant, try to be on time or even a little bit ahead of time, just not to inconvenience the rest of the group. It's a little bit different if you're invited to someone's home. Then try not to come before the established time and even try to give a little bit extra time for the host to do the last preparations. Polish people are very hospitable. They're trying their best to welcome their guests and to make everything perfect for the guests when they arrive. So there is a big chance if you come before time or even at the established time, you'll still see the last preparations, the hostess with her hair not really made till the last moment with spatula in one hand, the vacuum cleaner in the other, cooking the last things, seeing something in the last minute that needs to be cleaned. So just make sure you give them a little bit extra time for those last preparations. If you're gonna be about 20 minutes late or more, make sure you text, message the host or the person who's invited you when you're gonna get there, apologizing for the delay. A phone call might not be a good idea in this case. If you're running that late, there is a good chance that the host or the person who's invited you is already busy welcoming other guests. The only exception to being fashionably late when you're invited to someone's home is when they invite you for a warm meal. If 
having in mind that someone who prepared the dinner has got the soup already and the second course already in the oven, you should be on time because otherwise it gets cold. So you're supposed to be on time for a warm meal. It could be a dinner or lunchtime even. If you know someone who is organizing the party a little better, you might actually call ahead of time and ask them if they need help with preparations. And if they do, you might come early. When you're invited to someone's home for a party, a birthday, a social gathering, or even for tea or coffee, make sure you bring something along, like some kind of tea, cookies. If it's a party, then maybe something you cooked, something you baked. Try not to make it too extravagant, not to outshine the host. If you're invited for a birthday party, make sure you have a gift with you. Try to make it something symbolic, like a book, flowers, maybe a plant or some chocolates. As with food, try not to make it the gift too extravagant because that way the person receiving it will feel obligated to return the favor. As I mentioned before, people in Poland are very hospitable they go out of their way to make the guests feel welcome. But remember that when it's somebody's home, it is the homeowner or the host who makes the rules. For example, in most Polish houses, when you go in, you take off your shoes. You uh, also uh, but, get uh, slippers. You know, when you come to Polish home, you always get capture, yeah, so slippers. that you don't so, get cold feet. The host might actually be saying, you know, don't worry, keep the shoes on. Always uh, the host will tell you, no, no, don't take the shoes. No, it's it's a mess here. Don't, don't, don't take it. But they expect you to uh, take it off. Look around and check if the people around who already came, for example, have their shoes on, if the host has their shoes on, and maybe there is a lot of shoes by the door, that's your sign to take off those shoes. If you see other people in the house wearing shoes, then you're safe. While at the party, make sure you socialize with the people there. There's a good chance that the person who's invited you, or even the host, will spend time talking to you, trying to make you feel comfortable, speaking in the language you understand, and or they will find some other people who speak your language. What always breaks the ice is if you try to learn some words in Polish. I know it's very difficult, but we Poles are suckers for people who try to speak our language, even if it is just a few basic words, and even if you mispronounce them all, we will really appreciate it that you gave it a try. In the future, I will be teaching you some of the important words in Polish that you might want to know when you're on a visit or if you come to live here. But for now, I will teach you three words that should help you socialize and make the Polish people really happy that you tried. First one is Cześć. Cześć. Cześć in Polish means hello, but we also use it as goodbye. So in one word, which is quite difficult to pronounce, you actually have Two words. We don't expect any foreigner to say it perfectly, so make sure you try to say it the way you can. Pyszne. This word means delicious. And there is a good chance, if you're invited to someone's home, that you will be given food to taste. And it's good to know how to respond. Dziękuję. Dziękuję means thank you. And of course, everywhere in the world, it's important to be able to express gratitude. And especially in Poland, we tend to be very sensitive about it. The dress code in Poland is pretty standard, but it does change when you're invited to meet the parents, the grandparents or any other members of the older generations. People of the older generations are much more sensitive about the way you dress because in their eyes it expresses the respect you have for them. So if you're invited to a home of a person from an older generation, try to dress neatly. And the same goes for different occasions like weddings, funerals, christenings. The dress for these occasions is formal. Women usually wear dresses and men 
suits. It goes without saying in Poland, as well as in many other countries, that if you're invited to a wedding and you're not the bride, you don't dress in a fully white dress. Not to outshine the bride, of course. And the same goes with the funerals, try to wear black. It will surely mean a lot for the person who's invited you or the host of the party, if you have their number, to call them or text them, say thank you for the time spent together. That's it from me. If you guys can think of any other rules that can apply to social gatherings in Poland, leave that in the comments and don't forget to subscribe not to miss any of the next episodes.